Now, I've actually decided that in order to make my life a little bit easier, I'm going to take my reference plans for the arm and actually model on top of them. So even though I know at this point there's not a whole lot on the arm, that's exactly where I want it compared to the background reference image. But we're going to ignore that temporarily, and we're going to use these reference planes directly for modeling purposes. So later on, we can always kind of move these back or move the geometry back to fit our background. So just like we've got to do for the waist, we're going to do that for the arm. It's just going to be a lot easier in the long run to model directly on top of this rather than trying to kind of force everything and get it to line up accurately. So we're gonna look at rotating this just a little bit more down. So if I turn off angle snap, that's just A on the keyboard and I can turn that on and off while I'm working. We're gonna bring that down just a little bit more so that we line up with the actual direction that the arm is gonna line up. So that's pretty close. We've got a little bit of an odd angle here, but from the back, that's not really there. I'm gonna actually take the front, and we're gonna move that down just a little bit so that my front and back do seem to line up a little bit better. Now, even if they're slightly off, it's not gonna worry me a whole lot. It's just one of those things that we'll deal with as we go. So I think that's gonna work out a little bit better. Let's grab that body mesh and keep going. Now as we look at this we can see a little bit more about where these muscle masses should actually be moving, wrapping, lining up. So you can see here really in kind of the overall geometry we're doing pretty good but we're gonna move this around a little bit more and kind of get that muscle mass back where we want it. So here we're gonna grab the end of this and bring it back in here a bit more. Now, we can't really see exactly where that muscle goes here, but we can at least tell that we're pretty close to on track with where we want it. So as it wraps down in and around the arm here, this is it here that comes down. So we're gonna bring that down pretty far. So we're then gonna bring the bicep muscle down to accommodate that larger muscle mass. You can also bring the rest of the bicep down and around. We're gonna watch the flow of the muscle in that background image, and we're gonna to try to match it as much as we can. So now we start to get a little bit more accuracy in the volume here. Now the top edge here still isn't gonna line up just because of the way our images are going to work. So we have to kind of use them as much as possible without worrying too much about them being hyper accurate. So as we wrap around here, we see right, this is in a pretty good spot, but this one needs to be quite a bit farther back. So that's gonna wrap a lot lower. So we wanna bring these down and then we'll start actually kind of opening this up even more and wrapping it around the front of the arm even more. So as I do continue to kind of work that down, I want to look and see where this is kind of inserting and wrapping around the forearm from this view as well. So that's actually looking pretty good. Can we see where that is on the back? Yeah, that's this muscle mass here that's wrapping around the front. So I think we're in a pretty good spot here. It's not finished by any means, but it's starting to actually hit the right spots. All right, so now we're gonna take and copy a couple of these muscle groups here. We'll actually just take this one. And we're gonna bring that down to the bottom of the forearm. And we're gonna kind of rotate it and wrap it the other way. So now as we look around here, we want this muscle mass to be wrapping on the front side of the arm. So again, I always want to be checking as much reference as possible while I'm working so that I can see where these muscle masses are going. 
Now this one should end up wrapping to kind of the bottom side of the elbow. So we'll bring a lot of this back this way a bit. And as we kind of wrap under, see from the back here, we're a little bit lower. From the front, we're a little bit higher. So we just want to keep looking at how all this is going to interact. Again, there's no perfect involved in any of this at this point. We just want to start seeing how all these muscle masses are going to kind of move and flow and work together. So I'll just do the best I can with the geometry that I've got. And then as we start to kind of join things up and get things to work and merge together, then we'll start to get a little bit more accurate. So for here, we're going to bring this forward a bit. And then we'll take these and move them up a little bit more. So this one's going to cover a pretty large area here on the forearm. And we can see here that it's actually looking pretty good. It's not too far forward, but we do want to make sure, right, that we kind of split the difference with this muscle or this group of edges that's in the middle here. So I think that'll actually work pretty well for this. So we can continue the leading edge of some of these muscle groups and kind of keep bringing them forward. Now this is made of multiple muscles, but there's actually very little definition in this area. So we'll bring these forward a bit here, forward a bit here, and then as the bicep kind of wraps and works around some of this, we're gonna also wanna look and make sure that we're gonna bring this forward one more time at least, yeah, let's just go back to those edges and we're going to scale them down. And then here we can actually rotate them a little bit to open it up in that spot. And then we'll move it back in here. So as all of this is going to kind of insert and move and work around each other, obviously some of these vertices here are going to have to be adjusted and moved so that we do get everything kind of inserted around the other parts of the mesh. So we just want to kind of spread that out, get that to taper down in, and just try to watch the flow of the mesh as it moves in and kind of wraps around other parts. All right, so that works a little bit better there. We get some nice separation here. Visually from this angle, this needs to come up a little bit. And it looks like we grabbed some vertices in there and extruded them forward that we didn't really want. So we'll grab those and we're just going to delete them. So as you move around the mesh, those kinds of things should hopefully become noticeable to the point where you can kind of fix and get rid of stuff that shouldn't be there. So we're going to grab those vertices there at the end and we're going to move them forward a bit so that we can actually have a spot where we're going to end up being able to join them in. So that looks like that works right there. So we're going to end up needing a connection or subdivision of these edges along here so we can join all this up. For now though, that's actually going to work. So we're going to take some edges back here on the triceps. And as we look around the back of the triceps, we can see we're not anywhere near as far back as we should be. So let's actually just take these two edges and move them back on the mesh. So now as we start to kind of make that adjustment, we're gonna see how that tricep muscle works around the back of the arm. So there's not too much here that we can do to really perfect all of this, but what we can do is really start to get the visual mass of the triceps a little bit closer to where it belongs. So we're going to take these two edges and we're going to shift drag them forward a couple of times to build up that mass a little bit. Now the muscles of the triceps kind of work in and around this band of tendon. So at the point where it enters that band of tendon, we're going to end up needing an extra set of edges to help kind of define a crease there. 
For now though, we don't need to worry too much about that. And we're gonna bring that all the way down to about the elbow. Now, as I look at this on the back of the arm, I can see that that tendon bundle needs to narrow out quite a bit by the time we get into the elbow here. So we're gonna bring that down. And then we're gonna go back to the vertices and we're gonna do some more adjustment here on the back of the arm. So we're going to start looking at where that band is going and try to make some adjustments to the mass of the triceps muscle. So I always want to kind of look around and see where all this is moving. And if I can kind of adjust that early enough in the process, it makes it a lot easier so I don't have to go through and try to adjust everything after the fact. So the triceps is actually working out pretty well there. We can look at also adding some extra mass or extra volume down here in the bottom. But we wanna start by just grabbing a couple edges here and using our bridge to add a new set of polys in here. So there with just three segments, we're gonna have the vertices that we want to join up. Make that full screen. And then we're going to go to target weld, find that vertex welded over, that one welded over. So generally, I like to kind of connect the new stuff into the old stuff, because I'm assuming that I have the old stuff in the right spot. So then the new stuff gets welded into it, and everything should work out. Now, it really does look like on the bottom of the arm here, we want to open this up a little bit more and kind of smooth out the flow. So I think that should work pretty well. Let's look at it full screen and see where those vertices are. See, we can start bringing that up a little bit here. I think we can bring it up a little bit here because we're way below, but if we look up here, we're below it there as well. So we don't want to kind of move things around too much. At this point, I think that should be pretty good. So we want to kind of keep the flow going the direction we want it to. But in some spots, we still have to just kind of look at it for positional information rather than absolutely accurate. All right, so as we get farther out here, we're gonna to have to think about the same thing. And do we want to kind of bring all of this down to keep everything below that line? Or at this point, you know, we can probably actually keep it lined up where it is. But I think what I'm gonna need to do before we go any farther with the arm is create myself some reference lines just for the arm itself so I can make sure that my front and back reference plane are at least closer to being lined up. So when we start the next one, we'll actually create some reference lines and get the arm reference images lined up exactly right so that we don't have to keep fighting them front to back.